Recursion. Yes. These alone screwed me up so much in college, but I got them now and I'm gonna help you out with them too. Without further ado, here are some Java recursion examples. But if you're new here, I'm Alex. Welcome to my channel. On this channel, I make a Java tutorial every single week, just like this one. So if you're new here, that's something you might want, then consider subscribing. So let's kick off these Java recursion examples by just going to File, New Java Project. I'll just call it recursion. And in the source folder, go to new class. And I'll call it recursion is cool. Hit this first check mark, public static void, and we're good. So maybe you're in class, maybe your teacher just assigned something with recursion, maybe they had a slide or two on it, and it looked really complicated. But so we're all on the same page. Recursion is just a method being called inside of itself. So let's do that right now. Let's do a really basic, easy example of recursion. So let's make a method. This main method is a good template to make a method. So I'm just gonna type public static void, just like the main method. We're just gonna make our own though. Let's do something simple. Let's just print hi, print the word hi. And we'll call our method say hi. It won't take in any parameters, so we'll just put those parentheses with nothing inside of them. Do curly braces, and inside of these curly braces is what our say hi method's gonna do. And we'll just say hi. So. We'll print out high, system.out.println, and then the string high. We'll save it and run it, and nothing gets put on the screen because when we hit the green run button, that only calls things inside of the main method. So we have to call say hi inside of main. So we'll just type that. Say hi. Save it and run it and we see hi printed out one time. But let's use recursion. Well, we know that recursion is just a method called in itself. So let's do that and see what happens. Our method is say hi. So we'll just call say hi inside of itself. And let's just see what happens. Let's experiment here, like mad scientists. <laughs> Woo! And it looks like we got an explosion. I'm gonna scroll up to the very top here and it looks like we got a bunch of highs and then at the bottom there's like this red text and the first words are exception in thread main java.lang.stack overflow error. An exception means something stopped the flow of the program. I have a video on exceptions on the screen now if you wanna check that out and learn more about them. But here we get a stack overflow error. Something's obviously not right. And it's because we're printing out high so much that the computer can't handle it. We're printing it out pretty much infinitely fast for an infinite amount of time. And so the computer's like, hey, whoa, slow down. And it stopped. Well then, why do we have this? Because with recursion, you're supposed to have the call of the method inside of it. So what did we do wrong? The only other rule for recursion is that it needs to know when to stop. That's called a base case. So I'm gonna just write a comment here to remind ourselves with, we need a base case. So it doesn't do it forever infinitely fast and infinitely many. So we'll try to fix our method, say hi, into one where it doesn't crash and we have our base case. We can easily tell it when to stop by just saying how many times we want it to say hi. So we can just input that as a parameter here as an example. So we'll have an integer like n to say the number of times we want to say hi. I'll just put a five in here to get rid of that underline and then delete this for now. A lot of the times in recursion to create a base case, you'll use an if statement. So in this example, we'll just say if n is equal to zero, then we'll stop and we'll print Done, just like that. But if it's not zero, else, then we'll say hi. Okay, but we know that for recursion, you need to call the method inside of itself. So we'll do that right now. We'll say, say hi, and then we'll pass in n. I'll save it and run it, and let's see what happens now. Looks like we get that same error. 
but we have a base case. Why is it still doing that? It's because n is never changing, so it never hits n is equal to 0. So we have to decrement n each time so that eventually it will get down to the base case and it will print done. I'll go over all this in a little more detail after we run it one more time. And so now it looks like it prints out one, two, three, four, five times, and then it says done. And this is a fully working recursion example. We have a method being called inside of itself, and we have a base case to tell it when to stop. So here's what's happening. When we click the green run button, we go inside of the main method. The first code we see is say hi with the parameter 5. That goes into this method, say hi, and sets n equal to 5. n is not 0, so we go into the code in the else. We print our hi, and that's this first hi. We decrement n, so n is now 4, and we call say hi with 4. This say hi is the exact same as this say hi. They both go to the same code except this one is passing a 4 now. So we go back up, say hi, and n is 4. It's not 0, so we go in here again, print out another hi, right there. Now n is 3. Say hi of 3, n is 3, print another hi. And we go through that, n will get decremented enough until we have say hi of 0. And in that case, since n is equal to 0, then we print done. And that's exactly what happens here. Now we're getting the hang of it. Um, we call the method inside of itself, and we have our base case. And I'll give you one more Java recursion example right here. So let's make a new one, uh, delete the old one. We'll make a method that counts backwards using recursion. So we'll say public static void as just a template for our method. We'll call it count backwards. And we'll pass in an integer n the number that we want to count backwards from. A good place to start off with recursion is the base case, and that's really easy to do with an if statement. So we'll type if, and we'll say n is equal to 0. Then we'll print out done, just like before. Otherwise, we'll call count backwards with n. So count backwards with n. Each time we have to subtract 1 from n, so we make sure it goes down eventually to hit that base case. And before we do that, we'll print out the number. So we'll print out n. OK. Save it and run it. Nothing happens because we're not actually calling count backwards in our main method. So we'll just do that. And we'll say, um, 14. Save it and run it. Let's see the results. And that's pretty great. We have starting at 14, 13, 12, all the way down until 1. Then we hit our base case and print out done. So I really do hope that these uh, Java recursion examples helped you out. If it did, please leave a like and share it with a friend if you think that might help them with their recursion. As always, you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I appreciate that so much, and I will catch you in the next video. Thank you for being a great viewer, and I'll see you later.